welcome to this week's Fireside Chat with Jesse. I am joined today by Jenna Morgan, Chief Operating Officer of JDR Solutions. Welcome, Jenna. Hi, great to be here. Glad to have you here, and I'm glad to have you, uh, be, you know, as a part of Team JDR now. I'm very excited for that. So, yeah, me too. Just having you dive right into this, like not even a month into the job, and suckered you into coming on here. So appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to do it. Yeah, I'm excited. So, so uh, Jenna, for those people who might not know you, do you mind just kind of introducing yourself and your career to date in equipment finance? Yeah, um, Jenna Morgan, Chief Operating Officer at JDR. Uh, I started in the business about 10 years ago um, at Channel in sales. And so people might know me um, throughout the associations and having being at those booths. Um, then I went on to KLC, and I did sales there as well as marketing. Um, I had my first child when I was there. I also got married when I was there. I had my second <laughs> child when I was there. <laughs> so a lot happened at KLC, but it really opened up the opportunity to move on to some other things. I went part-time with my first child in I went and did some special projects for Spencer Thomas, the president of KLC, and that really helped me learn the whole, which was really fun. So I did a lot of um, project management, process, procedures. Um, I implemented the front-end Salesforce system, as well as helping with efficiencies with automation, APIs, all those things. Um, after that project, we decided to outsource our backend servicing. So that, um, as well as just managed it throughout the, the whole process and then after the fact. And then I also had collections. So I was the VP of ops. And then when I left there, I was the COO. So most recently. That's amazing. Um, and, and I would say like, the fact that I remember, I think when you started in business development um, yeah. on that side, so you've literally seen pretty much like how organizations run or supposed to run, or you have an idea on how they run pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> very true. Very true. So I've been married. So I was there for eight years. Uh, I've been married to my husband for those eight years. And we have two kids, my daughter, Asher, she's six and in first grade. And my son, Ezra is four and is in preschool. So definitely a full plate. And, um, you know, I want to touch base on something there. So the flexibility was key, right? Yeah. Um, and getting you through those couple of years where you're just having and starting your family. Very true. Yes. Um, I went, like I said, I had went part time and did special projects when I could. So I worked maybe 15, 20 hours a week during that time. And that was for about a year and a half. And then I came back. But during that year and a half, I learned so much about the business, um, just seeing different sides of it, things that the president maybe wanted to take on, but didn't have time to take on, said, would you be interested in doing those kind of things? And so I said, yes, I'll try it. I have never done it before, but I'm pretty resourceful. So I could figure out, well, who can I tap into and to the network that could help me make this happen? So Perfect. Perfect. So um, we want to take a couple of minutes and just talk about uh, JDR, if you don't mind. So yeah. um, when, um, you know, when this position was posted, like what was, well, I guess, what kind of attracted you to the idea? Because obviously you went, you out outsourced to a third party at KLC, right? So you, you understood that process. You ran over, you know, ran through it, implemented it. Um, from a JDR perspective, Jenna, what kind of attracted you to our organization? Yeah, um, I think there's just a bigger need in the marketplace for what JDR does. And so I saw the potential that this is a really great business that has a really great core. We have really talented people um, and there is a huge need out there. So that was exciting to me. And from, um, I guess you're now... What, a whopping well by the time this airs you'll be five weeks in so you know <laughs> yes. but um, but you're three weeks in um obviously you're a very intelligent um woman you did a lot of research prior to joining here um you know talk about 
kind of the customer base and you're investigating the company. And it's one thing if Jesse and Doug are sitting there saying why great we are, but um, you're smarter than just taking our words for it. I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when you're talking to our customers prior to joining and even now being three weeks in, um, just talk about that experience if you don't mind. Sure. So, yeah, I'm at JDR. Well, one of the main reasons why I'm at JDR is because of one of their customers. Um, they're very loyal. They um, love what JDR does. They say that they're the best. Uh, I completely agree now that I'm here for the for the three weeks that I've been here, but the, the customers have nothing but good things to say. They're very happy with the quality of work that JDR does. So when I was, um, I think it was at the ELFA executive roundtable when I was quote unquote stalked there by one of JDR's customers saying, you need to take this job. Strategically um, planted customer maybe <laughs> at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, that convinced me. I mean, there's nothing better than a customer that goes out of their way to be an advocate for an organization that they utilize and value in their business. No, and I echo those sentiments because that was one of the re deciding factors of why I came here almost two years ago. Um, you know, being in the software side or even at OSG where it's third party outsourcing. I was successful, I think one out of maybe 50 times that I tried to pry a JDR client away from them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you got that one. <laughs> I got that one. I got that one. And I still still hold it over Doug's head. But, um, you know, even that one, while I still was able to move them to a software platform, they still use JDR for something. And it's like, makes sense. Makes sense. But, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, so this is my third service organization. I've been a part of, I guess, service provider. And I, what I find unique about it is every customer that we have is referenceable. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's hard to achieve, um, especially, you know, in any industry, let alone this one. Yeah, I agree. Very hard. I mean, you have your maybe top five, top 10 that really speak highly of you. And then you have like, okay, they're okay. And I'm fine with it. But to have every single one happy, it's amazing. And it's like, can I call this person? It's like, give, 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 give me two weeks. Give me two weeks in, in, in the previous life. Did anything happen? You know what I mean? Like, did anything yeah. happen that I should be aware of? I know. But, um, and then from, a, I guess, an employee talent perspective, um, you know, what are your thoughts on that pre-coming and then now being here? Yeah. Well, I didn't know much about the staff. I mean, the customer spoke for the employee base um, just by saying the quality that was delivered. But um what I've seen is, yeah, they're exceptional. They care about their customers, truly. Um, not just say that. It's not a, just a cliche. They truly care about their customers. They go above and beyond um, for them every single day. And they work really well together as a team. So as an organization and our culture, as I was interviewing every single person that works at JDR, because I wanted to know what is our strengths and what are our opportunities, how we can um, better service our customers, how we can be a better organization. The trends that I saw for strengths were we work really well together as a team and we love our customers. So no, no, absolutely. The person said that. No, they, they absolutely do. And they go above and beyond. Um, and it's almost to the point where, you know, my personality, the people watching this pretty much know it too, but um at some point, I have to sit there and say, stop. It's like eight o'clock at night. You get log off, go do it. Well, but I need to get this out. I'm like, I'll text that person and tell them bye tomorrow. <laughs> like, just stop. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> it's not urgent. It can wait. Right? It, 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 it can wait. And that's me. Like, when is it done? Like, we need it done now. And it's like, no, just relax. Just relax. <laughs> um, you that's know. me too. So next question I have is, so, you know, you've been on the operation side. Um, you know, I know in channel, they did all their servicing themselves. Obviously when you started with KLC, they had it in-house and then they mm -hmm. went to the outsourcing model. Um, I guess as an operational leader, what makes you believe in the outsourcing model so much, Jenna? 
Yeah, well, I think from lessor side and the way that I looked at it and the way that um, companies that I know look at it is that it can be sort of a distraction, right? So a lot of sales leaders go into business because they love sales and they realize they can do that and then they build a, a company around them but they still are salespeople at heart and they want to do sales and marketing. They want to put a deal together. They want to sell it to the customer and they want to have happy customers, the operations, the back end side, the contract management and collections. It's really, like I said, a distraction to the core business of what they really want to do. And the most profitable part of their business is the sales. Right. And so the outsourcing that and having a fractional expert that knows exactly how to service their customers and treat them really well so that the lessor can get repeat business, which is ultimately what they really want, um, can help streamline their, their operations. No, and you hit a good point there. I mean, I think I've been on the sales side since I joined the industry in 2005 and you know, some of these deals I've been working on for 17 years. Yeah. And when you finally get them as a customer, um, the last thing you want to do is have something happen with the process. And if you don't have the right partner behind you or the right operational backing, you know, 17 years worth of work can be <laughs> gone away real quick if it's not yeah. done correctly. <laughs> yeah. But um, still have to get, at least they'll have to get a customer, not very long to lose them, right? It does. And the, the cost to acquire that new customer, you know, or the cost, the cost to keep that existing customer is significantly cheaper than it is to go out and get new business. So yeah, do what you can. <laughs> yeah. Um, so those partners are really important to make sure that you continue to get that repeat business. I agree. I agree. So JDR is located in Indianapolis. That's our headquarters. Mm -hmm. You're sitting in um, St. Paul. I'm sitting in Queen Creek, Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, from a cultural perspective, you know, being a leader of this organization, what are your thoughts on, you know, maintaining or building a culture, um, especially if, if you, me, not in the office. Well, I think that it, it starts with the people, right? If you have the right people and the right seats, they're all have a shared vision and we're all rowing in the right direction. I think that sets up it for, a, for a great culture and a, a great organization that people want to be a part of and want to work hard for. I think that initially um, as leaders, that's what we really need to make sure of. And then it comes down to just being intentional. You know, I truly, if you truly care about your people, you care about what's happening in their workday, you care about what's happening in their personal life. And then you're measuring and keeping people accountable for the results because you're not there to see them in seats. Okay? So we have people all over the country, well, internationally, because we have people up in Canada Right. So we're not there. We're not there to see that. So that that tracking and those matrix really help leaders know that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, but more not from a, an accountability or micromanagement standpoint, but people also need that feedback. How do I know if I'm doing a good job? So you're also setting those expectations um, of people and people need that structure. daily, weekly, monthly, that you're just being intentional on, on feeling included. And so, cause they could also feel like they're out on an island, you know, us, we could feel like we're on an island and we're not part yeah. of this organization if we don't be intentional about reaching out to people. So. No, and that's, and that's spot on. I think uh, the events over the last couple of years kind of helped that out a little bit, but uh, you know, there also is, I'm curious to see how we continue to grow it and then maintain mm -hmm. the culture when we can't be next to somebody. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a industry wide, or I guess probably not even just this industry, every industry wide. It's like, how do you make sure that people 
are feeling included, um, mm -hmm. that their opinion matters and that they're a part of this team. Yeah. And then maybe a yearly retreat, right? Where you get everyone together and um, so they can connect with each other. It would be fun. I agree. Now, if we did it in January, I'm going to raise my hand and say Arizona, not Minnesota. Just, <laughs> just throwing that out there. Yeah, I would raise my hand for that too. I don't want to be here in January either. <laughs> it's freezing. Uh, no, it's fr absolutely. Just a little bit. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about some of the industry accolades that you uh, achieved, Jenna, and uh, kind of what that means um, to you just personally and professionally. So um, off the top of my head, 40 under 40, I think when it first came out, and then the top women in leasing designation. Um, so first off, congrats for both of those. Yeah, thanks. Um, second question, did you buy the little plaque that, they, that you could get? I did not, no. <laughs> uh, I may have gotten the plaque. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I guess I do need the plaque instead of these birds in the background. I need those plaques, right? <laughs> I don't know. It's just, you know, I, I am who I am, I guess. But um, well, we work hard for it, right? It's nice yeah. to be recognized for the hard work. Um, so I'm honored for that. And sometimes just nice to look at the plaque, you know, have a hard day, look at the plaque. You know, it's all worth it in the end. So what did you feel like when you first, uh, when you got that email and said, Congratulations. Yeah, I mean, it was really the feedback. I needed that. I thought it worked really hard throughout my career. Um, and it was nice to be recognized. And then I looked at the other people that got it and was honored. I was like, wow, I'm in a, a group of all these amazing, talented leaders um, and women. It's just, it's awesome. Yeah, it's almost like, um, I, I don't know, I don't want to say the word self-serving, but it's not really self-serving, but it makes you feel good that just yeah. like, okay, someone, number one, they went out of their way to nominate you, right? Mm -hmm. And then number two, I'm sure they just don't get 40 or, <laughs> you know, applications. So they have to make a decision on who actually is worthy of the nomination. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong in being proud and and wanting to yeah. be recognized for the work that you do and oh. and being able to I, say that out loud. So. I, I agree 100. percent So, um, you know, for p everyone that comes on here, I ask them a little fun fact about themselves. So, um, anything you'd like to share yeah. with the audience here, Jenna? Yeah. So I knew you were going to ask me this. <laughs> so I asked my husband this morning and I go, what's some fun facts about me? And he goes, you like R&B 70s music? Oh. So everyone, well, most people that are listening to this know I love dancing, but ultimately I love dancing to 70s R&B music. <laughs> Maybe 80s, some 90s too. I, I maybe use that against her at the Ops and Tech conference to get her to <laughs> stay out past her bedtime, but. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I showed up. I delivered. You were there. You were there. I was not, but you, you were there. <laughs> um, also, my husband says that I like to drive fast cars slow. So he goes, you know, you would be in a Maserati and you'd be driving at 13 miles an hour because you're afraid of it <laughs> in the ninth gear. <laughs> so. so that's another fun fact. <laughs> Also, I want to put a plug in for where we have conferences. I love the beach, but I love the mountains more. And so I would really love to see a conference at a resort in the mountains. Mm. Like Colorado, like Denver would be nice if you can get further mm -hmm. outside. But uh, Utah, that's interesting. up in the mountains. So I, I, was, at a C I was at a CFLA up in Whist at Whistler. Nice. That was That was beautiful. But I would say that Canada probably has <laughs> a little bit more destinations that have those than uh, have some of them. our bigger cities. <laughs> yeah. But even Asheville, North Carolina, you go up an hour into the mountains, it's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Noted. Did not know <laughs> that, but noted. <laughs> 
Well, thank you for sharing that. So I, I guess just kind of Jenna in closing here, um, you know, why should people be excited about the future of JDR with you on board? Yeah. Um, well, my, my mission is that there's a bigger place for JDR in the marketplace. I truly believe that. I think we have a great product to offer, great service. Um, I just think people need to know more about us. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited to be on this journey with you. No, I mean, um, trust me, when uh, the opportunity came to do business with you and, and have you be a leader of this organization, I was really excited. So, um, you know, it's been a good three weeks. I can't wait to see what the next three months, the three years plus on, you know, can bring yeah. to the table here. So I agree. Likewise. All right, Jenna. Well, I appreciate your time today and uh, look forward to, I'm trying to think here. So next week, so the week after will be just coming in. So I guess I should say, I will see you in three days and, uh, in Marco <laughs> yeah. Islands. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. You have a good day. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. All right.